Here's a riddle for you. What does roller skating, Gene Kelly, Olivia Newton-John, Greek mythology, and Electric Light Orchestra have in common? The answer is Xanadu. By all accounts, this sci-fi, disco, roller skating musical should have been a success. Critics and audiences just weren't feeling it. Forty years ago, Xanadu was met with negative reviews and dismal ticket sales. Of course, as film oddities often do, it's garnered itself a bit of a cult following over the years, regardless of its inauspicious origins. But why did it fail so miserably when it was first released back in 1980? Disco was all the rage, and the 80s were fertile times for all things over-the-top, cheesy, and neon. We'll get to the bottom of that mystery in a second, but first, let's take a little look at some of the behind-the-scene tasty tidbits of trivia that Xanadu fans are probably not familiar with. Hey, what the hell's going on in here? One good thing that can be said about Xanadu is that it had an absolutely stellar soundtrack. Stay tuned to find out which one of its songs ended up reaching the top of the charts for four weeks in 1980. It almost co-starred Mel Gibson. Kira, the witlessly whimsical musical's lead female role, was played by Olivia Newton-John. In fact, she was the first choice that producers had in mind. She had envisioned her love interest being played by Mel Gibson. It's probably a good thing that he didn't take the role, however, as his career might have taken a turn for the worse if he had. Many actors who starred in the doomed film struggled to find work afterward. Michael Beck, who had previously starred in The Warriors, got the part instead, and by all accounts, he gave a pretty terrible performance. It's somewhat of a remake. Rita Hayworth starred in the 1947 film Down to Earth. In the film, she plays a Greek goddess who visits the earthly realm and falls madly in love with a Broadway producer. While that might not exactly be the same storyline as Xanadu, it obviously did serve as its inspiration. Down to Earth was actually in itself a sequel to another film, Here Comes Mr. Jordan, which was in fact a remake of a play called Heaven Can Wait. So yes, Xanadu is actually a remake of a film that was a sequel to another movie that in turn was based on a play. Confused yet? You should be. Gene Kelly's Final Role Since Xanadu wasn't exactly received by critics with any kind of a warm reception, it didn't do much in the way of padding anyone's resumes. That being said, many of the cast members who signed up for the project already had made quite a name for themselves. Unfortunately, Xanadu would be the legendary Gene Kelly's last feature film credit. He'd appear in two Love Boat episodes before his death in 1996, but would never get a chance to see him shine again on the big screen. Kelly knew that Xanadu was going to be a flop. He thought that the concept was sound, but the execution wasn't what it could have been. Of course, by the time he realized that, it was already too late. Newton-John broke her coccyx while filming the film. For those that aren't familiar with the anatomical term, that would be her tailbone. It was during the filming of the suddenly number that she sustained the injury. Regardless, she pushed on and finished up the film. She deserves some kind of recognition for that perseverance alone, don't you think? Not just any muse. Even though she is silenced and told not to speak her true name out loud, Kira attempts to tell Beck's character that she is Terpsichore, which translates as delight in dancing. According to Greek mythology, she was the muse of song and dance. It jump-started at least one career. Although Xanadu may have, in fact, hurt some careers, for animator Don Bluth, it was just what his burgeoning career needed. His animation is featured alongside the song, Don't Walk Away.
Bluth would later go on to form his own production company and produce animated classics like The Secret of Nim, An American Tale, and The Land Before Time. Xanadu spawned a number one hit single. Even though people didn't exactly flock to theaters in droves to catch the film, folks absolutely loved the soundtrack. Olivia Newton-John scored herself a number one single on Billboard's Hot 100 for the track Magic, which charted at the top position for four weeks in August of 1980. The title track, Xanadu, which featured Electric Light Orchestra, also did fairly well in the U.S., reaching number eight. Internationally, however, it was a huge hit. It reached number one in the U.K., Spain, Israel, Germany, Belgium, Austria, Norway, and the Netherlands. All in all, the soundtrack was a bigger hit than the film ever was. The album went double platinum in the United States and produced five top 40 hits. Hey, not to get sidetracked, but if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Tap the bell icon to turn on notifications while you're at it. And keep watching to find out what made Xanadu the Broadway musical outshine its source material, which, as you'll continue to see, was absolutely panned by almost everyone that saw the film. Critics absolutely despised the film. While there were some fans of the film when it was released, most critics agreed that it had severely missed its mark. Whatever that mark was supposed to be in the first place, we're not exactly sure. Esquire called the movie a Xana Don't. Variety called it stupendously bad. And Dave Kerr of the Chicago Reader has called it a big budget bubblegum musical that is somehow both appalling but compulsively watchable, like some kind of train wreck. It helped get the Golden Raspberry Awards going. For those unfamiliar with the Golden Raspberries, they pay homage to the worst films of the year. They are something like the Anti-Academy Awards. John Wilson, the creator of the less than honorable award show, came up with the idea after sitting through a double feature consisting of Xanadu and the village people's Can't Stop the Music. He was so disgusted by the films that he attempted to get his money back to no avail. Can't Stop the Music ended up beating out Xanadu for worst picture that year. But a nomination still says a lot. Newton John was also nominated for worst actress, but Brooke Shields ended up winning for her lackluster role in The Blue Lagoon. The darker side of Xanadu. In 1983, a crazed fan of the film from Louisiana by the name of Michael Owen Perry somehow got it in his head that Olivia Newton-John's Kira character was actually a Greek goddess. His delusion took on an extra dimension when he became convinced that she was attempting to communicate with him through her eyes. He began to hear voices telling him that Newton-John was trapped under nearby Lake Arthur and saw visual hallucinations of corpses rising through the floorboards. In the end, Perry went on a violent killing spree. Armed with a 457 Magnum and a Beretta, he killed two of his cousins, his two-year-old nephew, and both of his parents. At his parents' house, he left a hit list of names, including Olivia's. Newton John was so rattled by the incident that she left the country for a while. She called the episode one of the most frightening moments of her career. Perry remains on death row to this day, spending most of his time in solitary confinement. The feature nightclub was a real venue. The titular Xanadu nightclub in the film was actually the Pan Pacific Auditorium. The facility was built by event producers Cliff and Philip Henderson in 1935. The streamlined modernist architecture was designed by Walter Werdemann and Welton David Beckett. It closed down in 1972, but was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1978. In 1989, following years of decay, the building was destroyed in a massive fire that could be seen all throughout the Los Angeles Basin. The Conan Connection Sandal Bergman, 
the toweringly tall actress who is best known for her playing Valeria, the warrior woman, in Conan the Barbarian, had one of her first roles in Xanadu. She played one of the muses alongside Newton John. Before Xanadu, she also danced in 1979's All That Jazz and 1974's Mame. It had awful special effects. Even though Xanadu is technically an 80s film, it featured special effects that were mighty archaic and downright amateurish for its day. Newton John is often depicted as having a neon glow that makes her look like she's been exposed to a high dose of radiation than she is an interstellar Grecian goddess. Much like the Golden Raspberry Awards, the now defunct Stinkers Bad Movie Awards nominated Xanadu for its least special special effects award. The sets were literally made out of cardboard. And don't go excusing it, citing its release year as an excuse for its incompetency. The Empire Strikes Back literally came out the same year and looks light years more advanced. Ironically, its visual style is one of the reasons why modern cult film fans enjoy the film. Xanadu the Musical received critical acclaim. The Broadway musical adaptation of the film opened to enthusiastic audiences in 2007. Rewriting much of the dialogue and plot, it managed to be met with a warm reception by critics and theater goers alike. In fact, it earned itself four Tony Award nods before closing in 2008 after 513 performances and 49 previews. So yes, in case you were wondering, Xanadu, the musical, was a stage play based upon a film, based upon a remake of a film that was a sequel of a 1941 film that in turn was based upon a play. If that's not enough to make you shout, Xanadu, then we don't know what is. Seriously though, if you don't get anything else out of this video, at least remember that Xanadu although a bit of a stinker of a film, has one absolutely amazing soundtrack. If you haven't listened to it for a while, go ahead and do yourself a favor and put it on. And in a nostalgic kind of way, the film is somewhat entertaining to watch. That is, if you can forgive it for its awful plot, acting, choreography, cinematography, and special effects. It's one of those so bad it's good kind of films. Kind of like one of those two-bit turkeys that the infamous Ed Wood used to produce. But what do you think? Are we being too harsh on Xanadu? Or is it as bad as everyone says? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Tap the bell icon to turn on notifications. And if you really want to go the extra mile, share this video on your social media feed.